I'm excited. We're in this series about praise, about worship is what it's really about, but it's called Till the Walls Come Tumbling Down. And uh, I'm excited about today because it's another aspect of, of praise. But I want to remind you, you know, don't miss church on Wednesdays. There's some good things going on on Wednesdays, and we're, we're going to have a great service this Wednesday. Pastor, Ma Pastor Matthew always has a great word. Come out to church. Amen. Be a part of things. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, let's pray out loud together. Say it with me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. In, the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I open my heart and I open my ears and I expect you to minister to me and, and touch my heart right where I am in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we just thank you for your word today. We ask you, Lord, to speak to us right where we are. We thank you, Lord, as we get into the scriptures today. We thank you, Lord, that you speak to us exactly where we are. And that, Lord, we get a hold of the important aspects of our faith and our praise. Lord, as we get into this, I thank you that we realize that prayer asks, but praise takes. And, Lord, I just thank you that we realize that and we get a hold of it. Because, Lord, this is our key to victory. And, Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor for it right now in Jesus' name. And everybody shout, Ed. Amen. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five and you can be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Excited about today. Excited about this message. Um, we're going to do several messages and talk about till the walls come tumbling down. But, you know, last Sunday we talked about Jericho. You know, they praised God as they went around the walls. And they kept doing it until what? Till the walls came tumbling down. And you know in your own life, you know no matter what it looks like, no matter what the circumstances are, you have to keep your praise on and keep your shout. Amen. It's a part of your faith. You speak, you confess the word, but you know what? you got to praise God. It's a part of it. Amen. It's the secret key to your victory when you praise God. Amen. Our, our theme verse is, uh, uh, is uh, the uh, Passion Translation of Psalms 11 verses 4 through 5. And it reads like this, and it's in your handout. Uh, you, can come, uh, you can pass through the open gates with the password of praise. I love that. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Come bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. For Yahweh is always what? Good and ready to receive you. He is so loving that it will amaze you. So kind that it will astound you. And he is famous for his faithfulness toward, towards all. How many is all? all? All. Are you a part of the all crowd? Amen. Amen. He's famous for his faithfulness towards you. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone knows our God can be trusted. Trusted. For he keeps his promises to how many generations? Every generation. Amen. See, praise is the secret to victory. It really is. Praise is the secret to victory. I mean, we talked last week about the waiting room. But how many of you have prayed and you're believing God for something? And, and you know, and uh, maybe you I, I have lost your focus on the word as the week goes on. Or maybe you've been watching too much of the news and you get your eyes off other things instead of the word. And, you know, uh, uh, maybe you've just gotten off kilt, so to speak, off kilter. You know, you're just kind of oh, wa waffling back and forth. And you're wringing your hands and you start thinking, well, Lord, I don't know. I need this to happen, Jesus. I need this. To no, you need to praise God. You need to quit being a beggar and be thankful. You need to quit being a beggar because you've been given the kingdom. You have it in your hands. The kingdom of God is full in your spirit, man. You need to quit being a beggar and an orphan when you've been adopted into the family. And your dad owns the cattle on a bazillion hills. You have nothing to worry about. Amen? And not only that, like this verse says, he's famous for his faithfulness towards you. He's famous for his faithfulness towards you. And you know what? He can be trusted and he keeps his promises to you too. Amen. See Psalms 34 and verse 1. Look at this verse. I will bless the Lord at just when I feel like it. Is that what it says? I will bless the Lord at how much? At all times. Say that first part out loud. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. Go on. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, continuous keeps going, right? How many of you had a record player when you were younger? I know some of y'all in here just aren't old enough for record players. But, you know, uh, if you, how many of you had a, a, four, a whole stack of 45s like I did? Anybody have an 8-track? Uh, I'm, I don't want to talk about that, but, you know, uh, uh, remember you were 45 when the needle got dull or if there was a scratch on the record? What would happen to the needle when it hit that spot? It would skip. And if you fell asleep, it'd be doing it all night long, right? I mean, it'd be skipping and skipping and skipping until you move the needle and get it back on track. But see, your praise should be like that needle setting into the groove and not moving from where it's at. Because it's continuous that you praise Him. It's continuous that His praise is in your mouth. It's continuous that you praise God at all times. I mean, have you ever met a Christian who always seems to be full of joy and gladness? That should be you. Amen. I read in the Wall Street Journal, uh, I think it was yesterday, and uh, um, there was an article in there. This was so, I thought, absolutely stupid that they're thinking this. Can I say that? Today? I did. Stupid. You see that, Facebook? Stupid. That it's toxic to be positive all the time. Yes. Some nut job wrote that it's toxic to be happy all the time, to be, to be full of joy, to have a skip in your step. Amen. It is not toxic. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's a necessity of life. And my God, don't you know that you need to be happy during these times? Yeah. Hey, we were in Walmart after the Rama thing at the house. We loaded up and went to Walmart. That's our go-to place for joy. Amen. And we went to Walmart. And one of the workers there was going through the store and he was getting his stuff. His name was John. And he came up. He got, I think he was talking about why we were happy and all that. And he goes, you know, do you think this all, all this mess going on? I mean, there's nothing on the shelves in here that needs to be there, and there's no turkeys. He, do you think this is going to keep going on? I looked at him, I said, of course it's not going to keep going on. It's going to get better, you watch. Things will turn. And I told him, I looked at him, I said, go back and just Google it, the history of the Spanish flu. It was almost three and a half years before things let up, folks. And they did some of the same stupid, goofy things in the government that they're doing now. Take a chill pill and get your shout on and get your praise on. And quit being toxic yourself. Because negativity is toxic. And you not being happy, that's toxic. And I'll tell you why it's toxic. It's because you're not walking in faith and you don't have your praise and your shout on. Are you listening to me? You're drinking the Kool-Aid from the wrong barrel. There's mold on top of it. And oh my gosh, the worms have gotten in it. Why don't you start shouting praise to God and be happy the way he's blessed you with his supernatural joy. You've got the greater one on the inside of you. Amen. I mean, have you ever been around people who exhibits joy, the joy of the Lord, even in the good times and the bad? You know, the Bible says, you know, it's important that we praise him at all times. You know, a believer who is always full of joy has learned the secret of real maturity. The secret of living a life of joy is because they praise God no matter what. Amen. You've got to praise God no matter what or you'll cuss like a sailor every time you get up in the morning. If Jesus ain't the first thing out of your mouth, I mean, not like Jesus, you know, like you're mad. But you know, Jesus, Lord, I love you. I remember Brother Norville, when, we, when we, uh, we'd get together and pray sometimes when he was in town, and he would, uh, he'd come in, Jimmy James, what are you going to do today? I said, I'm going to love Jesus. That's a good man. And then, you know, we, we would have a, a little prayer meeting and things, and, uh, you know, he'd always tell us, he goes, when I get up in the morning, I say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, you're all in all to me. That's how he'd start his day. And that's how you need to start your day. If you don't, I mean, you're going to be licking a pine stump all day and looking like you've been, you know, messed up. You've got to be happy. It's toxic when you're not happy. Amen. You pollute the atmosphere at your job. <laughs> 
Do you bring your friends down? Huh? You need to be happy. Being positive is a good thing. It's called faith in action. Amen. Even Smith Wigglesworth, oh, he'd get up early and dance. One, uh, one of the guys that traveled with him noticed the lights in the ceiling bouncing like this and flickering. You know, Smith Wigglesworth was a big man. I mean big. Everybody say big. big. And it's still bigger than that. He was a big man. And uh, when he would dance and carry it on and, and, and shout, I mean, you could hear him out down the hallways in the bottom of the dining room. Everywhere he was, you could hear him shout. So hear him sing, because he believed in getting a hold of the things of God and worshiping him. That's where you tap into things that are supernatural. Amen? If you're all the time looking, I just want to be happy, I just want to be happy, well, bless your darling heart. I, I, I feel sorry for you, because happy is based on your circumstances. Joy is supernatural. Yeah. And you need to tap into his joy, because yeah. his joy is your strength, and in his presence is fullness of what? Amen? See, God's praises must continually be in your mouth if you want to have joy and if you want to walk in victory. If you don't have joy, you know what? You're probably, uh, you probably have not learned the valuable secret of praising God. And let me tell you this today. You know, uh, our praise life is closely connected to our faith life. Oh, yeah. Your praise life is closely connected to your faith life because praise is an expression of your faith. Amen. Praise is an expression of your faith. See, walking by faith is something that we are to do every day and not just occasionally. Amen. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. In other words, we're to always walk in the light of God's word no matter what our circumstance. Amen. No matter what the circumstance may be, praise should be your lifestyle. Amen. Praise should be your lifestyle. It should be what, what, what makes you tick, what makes you go. Amen. Many Christians just don't understand the place that praise holds. They just don't. They just don't understand that. They don't understand how important it is that that we praise God. They don't know the place that it needs to hold in their life, especially in receiving answers to their prayers. You know, a lot of times we become beggars when we pray. And when you're mature, you'll pray for everybody else instead of your need. Amen. You'll worship God when you're mature more. See, we need to grow up in the things of God. It ain't all about your need. It's about serving Him. It's about honoring Him. Come on, that's good preaching. Yeah. I mean, it is. And, you're, you, you know, you want all these things to be perfect when you're not perfect. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Well, I just want everything to be perfect again. I don't like the way things are. You need to get back in the Word and get back on the joy wagon. Right. Quit being toxic. Oh, I'd like to find that writer of that article and preach to him right in the face. <laughs> Amen. Mash his mouth while I do it. I just mm, praise God. <laughs> See, our praise life is connected to our faith life. I bet he doesn't get anything in his life. You know what? Bet he don't. He's just all sourpuss living on dead end street. Amen. You know, a lot of Christians just don't get it. A lot of times they're missing it in their praying and their believing or in their confession of the word. They're missing it because they don't understand the secret key called praise. The secret key to victory is called praise. The secret key to life is called praise. Prayer has to be mixed with faith and praise in order to produce results. Prayer has to be mixed with faith and praise in order for us to see the results. Amen. Well, what's praise, folks? Well, praise is, is, is expressing gratitude to our God. Praise is expressing gratitude to our God. It's thanking Him for what He has done and what He's doing in your life. Amen. You need to thank God all the time for what He's doing in your life. You don't have to see your answer with your physical eyes to praise God. You don't have to see your answer with your physical eyes to praise God. But if you will praise Him because you believe He is working on your behalf according to His Word, you know what? It won't be long before His Word comes to pass in your life. 
because you're lost in his presence and in his praise instead of worrying about circumstances. So that's how you cast all the care over on him. You praise him. You magnify him. You glorify him. Like Norval would always told us, you get up first thing in the morning, well, my bare feet hit the floor. I love you, Jesus. I'm going to worship you today. God, you're so good. Thank you for my life. Thank you for, I got, I got another day. I'm breathing. Woo! I'm happy. You know how you start be how you finish. Amen. How you start will be how you finish every day. So a lot of folks, they miss it because they're not mixing faith with, with praise. Amen. Hallelujah. God's always working on your behalf. See, praise is also expressed, though, with enthusiasm. Come on. With enthusiasm and exuberance. Say that with me. Say enthusiasm. enthusiasm. And exuberance. exuberance. You ever seen somebody who's enthusiastic? Amen. You know the Bible says in Romans to serve the Lord enthusiastically? It does. I think it's the Amplified Bible. What was it, Matt? Pastor Matthew? Romans, Romans 12 down there on down somewhere about verse 7. One of those chapters there. Uh, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. Some of you, you know, it's like, again, you're licking the pine stump in the morning. You know, you've already started off wrong. You're concerned about what's going to happen today or what you're going to face. You need to be looking at God because he's the one that matters. He's the one you're going to face. You know, if you start your day off with him, it's going to be really good, isn't it? Amen. Amen. And even if you hit a speed bump, oh, my goodness, even if, you, you know, somebody turns in front of you and you hit the car. Or uh, I, Chris the other day, she, took, pull, you, she pulled out and some fellow just came right through the intersection, ran the light, right, and hit her, T-boned her. A brand new car. Hallelujah. And uh, it was such a joy. Not a scratch on her. Amen. Happy as can be. Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. You know, I've been praying that her business would have more work. And uh, they got more work than they can shake a stick at and an arm at and a leg at. I mean, it's just exploding. But you know what? Even when they're overwhelmed with stuff they have to do, there's still what at the office? Joy. Joy. Because our God's more than enough. Amen. Amen. See, your focus matters. You know, uh, uh, we all go through things, and, you know, uh, all of us deal with people at work. My God, when you're in the ministry, you deal with people all the time. <laughs> we, we, uh, that night, I can't tell you who it was, but there used to be somebody in public service, and somebody was high as a kite and was kind of uh, har harassing them and messing with them. And said, they told him, you better leave me alone. What you going to do, run over me? Yep. And they did. <laughs> and backed up. <laughs> Didn't run over them again when they backed up. But they backed up and waited for, for their associates to arrive and take them off the jail. Amen. Listen, you know, we all deal with things in life, but your focus is what makes the difference. Are you hearing me? Your focus is what makes the difference. See, praise is expressed with enthusiasm and exuberance. Uh, I've never seen a child receive a new toy or something they really wanted for Christmas. And without any emotion, they just said, thank you very much. <laughs> Eric can make that face real good, can't you? That little angry face. Yeah. I've seen him do it. Cut right through you. <laughs> Sit right there. It's like Bert. Bert and Ernie. It's like Bert when he makes his mean face. That's what you look like. That's a good. Amen. You know what? I, I mean, you got to remember, folks, you can't be that way. I never seen a kid act that way when they got what they wanted. I remember I wanted a CB radio for Christmas one year. And I didn't think I had it. But then there was this other box that came out of nowhere, and there it was. Amen. You know, and I was so excited. But no child will act that way. They usually jump up and down, excited. They they'll shout it out. I just, I, this is just what I wanted. Thank you so much. Just so excited. See, that's the way we should act when we believe that God's heard and answered our prayers. I'll say that again. It went over like a lead balloon for a lot of you. That, that is the way we should act when we believe God and has and that ha, believe that God has heard our prayer, heard our prayers and answered our prayers. Amen. Again, I'm telling you this today. You need to get hold of this. When you see this uh, on the screen here, I want you to realize this right now. 
Prayer asks, but praise takes. Prayer asks, but see, when you're in faith, praise takes it that it's already yours. That's why you got to keep your shout on. Come on. See, praise is an expression of faith. And faith in God's word produces results. Your prayers must be watered with praise before they will bear fruit. Come on. Your, your prayers must be watered with praise before they'll bear fruit. I mean, prayer has its place, yes and amen. But it's important that you have faith in God's word. But praise is an act of faith. Amen. It's the fruit of my lips giving him praise. It's an act of your faith when you praise him. It exclaims with gratitude and thanksgiving that God is good. Thank you, Father, for the answer. It's mine. I have it now. Amen. I believe I what? Receive. You see, it's a part of faith. Amen. Prayer asks for it, but praise takes it. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of times the lack of praise to God is the only thing that keeps people from receiving their prayers being answered or receiving answers to their prayers. You know, the praise life of a lot of Christians usually is the most neglected part of their life because they come to church and they praise God, but when they go back out into the world, they just go about life. But see, praise needs to be a lifestyle. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving one day of the year. Thanksgiving should be a lifestyle. I mean, I could take turkey once a week with gravy and all that. I like that. I mean, Thanksgiving right? Thanksgiving should be a lifestyle. You get really the full gospel when you do that too, by the way. <laughs> Amen. You know, praise should be a lifestyle. But a lot of Christians neglect, it, neglect praise except when they go to church. It's easy to shout and praise God when you're in a service where other believers are praising God and everybody's excited about God and the things of God. But you know what? Listen to me. The best time, the best time for praising God, for thanking Him that He has heard and answered your prayers is in the midst of the storm when all hell is breaking loose, when every circumstance that you could ever dream of is coming at you and smacking you upside the head, smacking you right into the face, you know, you're all messed up and everything's hitting you right where you are. Oh, that's the time you praise him more. That's the time you shout with joy more. Amen. See, in the midst of the storm is when all the circumstance will suggest to you that you don't have the answer. But see, you've already asked. And because you prayed and you've asked, now it's time to praise and take it because it's yours. Amen. Do you hear me? Now it's time to take it. In praise because it belongs to you. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, if you never waver in your confession of the word and you continually praise God, even in the midst of all adversity, you can't help but win in every situation. Amen. We have seen it in our lives time and time again. You can't help but win every time. I know somebody asked me, how did you get to where you are? Well, bottom line, I guess the best answer to give is to keep my praise. Amen. You know, everything just looks so good. Yeah, but, it, you know, there was times when there was a lot of adversity and a lot of trouble and a lot of problems. Amen. I don't mind telling you, you know, we almost lost our house uh, when we first started the church several times because there wasn't enough. There just wasn't enough to even write myself a check. Amen. But you know what? God's faithful every time. You got to keep your praise on, even when FedEx delivers that package from Bank of America telling you you got 120 days and we're going to take your house. Are you listening to me? We've been there, you know, when it wasn't so hunky dory. But when it's not so hunky dory, that's the time you ought to shout the most. Prayer asks, but what? Praise takes. Amen. Praise takes. Are you listening to me today? Regardless of the circumstances, folks. If a Christian who really knows God, who really knows God, they know that the circumstances can't hurt them because they're believing God and they got their praise on. Amen. They know Jesus has already won the battle and has obtained the victory for them in his death, in his burial, in his, and in his resurrection. And they know, they know that he always comes through. That's why you can keep your shout on. That's why you can keep your praise on. Amen. 
because he paid the price for you and me. Hallelujah. He knows how to see you through any test or trial. Amen. How many of you say that? Say, he sees me through all the time. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, the Bible says this. It says, thanks be to God. Uh, what is it? 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to what? Triumph. Triumph. Or 14, 14. Is that right? I don't know if I got the right one in there. Uh, I think it should be 2, 14, isn't it? Amen. Thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Amen. It's probably wrong on your handout too. That's my fault. Uh, thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ. You know, we always come out on the other side of any test or trial victorious when we continue to believe God's word and praise him. Amen. Amen. We always come out on the other side of any test or trial or circumstance or problem. Oh, we always come out on the other side. Oh, victorious because we praise him, because we tell him we love him, we worship him. Amen. You know, you may not always feel like praising him. Bless your heart. I've been there. Amen. Hallelujah. You may not always feel like praising God, but we shouldn't wait to praise him until we feel like it. God's always worthy of praise all the time. Amen. Say that again. We may not always feel like praising him. Oh, no. You might have a blister on the back of your foot, and it hurts to walk, and you don't feel like shouting praise. But, boy, you need to shout praise. You need to shout praise. Amen. Maybe you got a couple bills due this month that's got to be taken care of. Well, praise God. You know you've already spoke to the mountain. It's time to praise him and be happy. Amen. Amen. It's time to praise him and be happy. We praise him when we don't feel like it because God is always worthy of our praise. That's why the Bible talks about sacrificing praise to God. Amen. Where's that at? That's Hebrews 13, 15. Amen. By him. Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Notice sometimes the praise is a sacrifice. Amen. You don't always feel like it. You don't always want to do it. But you know you need to. Amen. You know you need to. By him, therefore, let me offer the sacrifice of praise to God continuously. That is the fruit of my lips, giving thanks to his name. You ought to write that down in your journal. Write that verse down as a confession. And every day you get up, you ought to say it and then do it. Amen. You ought to say it, then do it. Praise him. Magnify him. <clears throat> give him glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You know, when the test and the trials, when the test and the trials of life discourage you, you can begin to say by faith, by Jesus' stripes, I am the healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. God is supplying all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 19. Thank you, Lord, my needs are met. Thank you, Lord, healing belongs to me. Hallelujah. That is what it means to offer the sacrifice of praise, to magnify him. See, we are to continuously, no matter what the circumstance, we are to continuously, continuously praise God, no matter what it may be. No matter what tomorrow looks like, it could be raining. You know, every day I went outside and I saw that sinkhole in the front yard. You know, I, had to, I, I jumped down in it one day and just praised God. <laughs> I told myself, Jesus, you know, if you want to right now, just raise this up while I'm standing here. Freak my neighbors out. I love every minute of that. But I just praise you. This hole is filled. I did. And you know, it's been filled now. We had the yard, all, the guy came and finished all the yard work. It's all smooth. There's new grass been laid down. Uh, he put a French drain in to keep the water going out in the street, drilled, drilled a hole in the sidewalk. And all I could do is walk out there and I get to know, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My circumstance is gone. Glory to God. You know, if you don't keep your shout, huh, you're going to do without. If you don't keep your shout, you're going to do without. If all you're going to do is whine and complain, I think we ought to start charging people for complaining and whining. Amen? <laughs> that toxic positivity guy from Wall Street Journal, we need to charge him for all his toxic behavior. Amen? His sadness, his blues and despair and agony. We need to charge him for all that toxic, toxic behavior. Amen? The Bible says otherwise. I said the Bible says otherwise. Amen? Amen? You need to get your shout on. And you need to be happy. 
Amen. Which brings me to what I want you to leave with today as we close here. If we know, this is our central theme, if we know what God's Word says, we can praise Him because we know the victory is ours. You need to hang on to that. Yeah, you know, I have several Bibles. This is the pulpit Bible here, but all my Bibles, I write quotes in the back. This one is on, on the top of one of the pages. If we know, if we know what God's Word says, we can praise Him because we know the victory is ours. i say it again. You need to get it. This is what maturity is, folks. This is spiritual maturity. Can you praise Him no matter what it looks like? Instead of being in a panic about the country and about everything else, can you not praise Him because you're a citizen of the kingdom first? My God, you've been saved from it all, hadn't you? You've been delivered from all. Hallelujah. Amen. If we know what God's word says, we can praise him because we know the victory belongs to us. Amen. Victory belongs to me. Amen. Oh, the bloodstained banner has covered me. The bloodstained banner has given me victory. His blood has done that. Amen. See, if we know what the word says, we know we can trust him. We know we can praise him. We know we have the victory. It belongs to us. Remember, prayer asks, but faith, uh, but praise what? Praise. Takes. Prayer asks, but then praise takes. You've got to continually determine in your heart that no matter what, folks, you, my brother and sister, are going to praise God for what He has done and for what He's doing in your life. You know, there, you know that's really the secret to being a really mature Christian, to be honest with you. You know, you may not have all the Bible knowledge. You may not have all the, all the things you think you need to have in the post hole digger PhD at the end of your name. You may not have that. But I'm going to tell you something. When you always keep your praise, even when there's a storm, it changes everything. Because you'll always walk in victory. And you should be. Because he's worthy of praise. Amen. See, there is a secret to having the joy of the Lord and experiencing victory. And the secret is living a life of continual praise to God for His goodness and for His faithfulness to His Word. Amen? That's the secret. All right. You learned something today? That's a good word, isn't it? Hey, I want you to stand up on your feet this morning. We're going to, uh, I, we want you all to stay. There's plenty of food. We got bacon wrapped shrimp and all sorts of goodies. It's, it's a reception, so it won't spoil your lunch. But we want to let Pastor Donna know how much we love her. But before we do that, I want to pray with you this morning. You know, uh, there's some of you in here, uh, just by the unction of the Holy Ghost, you're dealing with something. You've been dealing with a situation or, or a couple situations or circumstances. But I heard the Holy Ghost telling me this morning in prayer that you need to focus your heart and your attention on praising Him. Yes. You keep asking the same thing over and over when you need to be praising Him because you asked in faith. Amen. Yes. Therefore, if you've asked in faith, it's done, isn't it? Yes. So you need to praise Him. There's some of you in here, there's a financial situation. Or, or There's a couple of folks in here, I, I'm sure you're up for review this month or next month. And you're believing God for a new year. Amen. For that promotion to come through. For that bonus to come through. Maybe you're believing God for uh, something in your family. Well, you know what? If you've already prayed and asked it, you've already been speaking to the mountain, confessing the word, what should you be doing right now? Praising Him. You ought to be doing it with exuberance and with excitement. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Smokey the Bear says only you can prevent forest fires. I'm telling you today, only you can start one. And you start one by praising Him, by lifting your voice and lifting your hands. You know, whatever it is you've been believing God for, you ought to get your shout on right now. I shouldn't have to even stir you up. You ought to be doing it right now. You ought to be lifting your voice and shouting to the Lord. My God, maybe you ought to run around the building this morning and get excited because Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah! Our God's more than enough. He's a God of victory. He's a God of victory. 
Oh, Jesus, we praise you. We magnify you. Come on, church. Praise him. Give him glory this morning. Thank him. Oh, that you got what you need. You got it all taken care of. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you. If you're believing God for uh, something in your body right now, why don't you shout about it today? Praise Him. Oh, Jesus, I thank you that by your stripes I've been made whole. Oh, I've been made whole. You're touching the hem of His garment when you shout praise to Him. You're touching the hem of His garment when you shout praises to Him. Hallelujah. Oh, just begin to shout to the Lord and give Him praise today. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We magnify you. Glory to God. We bless the Lord who reigns in beauty. We bless the Lord who reigns in wisdom and power and might. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Oh, you reign our lives with so much love, so much peace. Oh, so much happiness. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we praise you. We magnify you. Everybody shout it. Say, I got it. it. Do you? Come on. Say it again. I can't hear myself while I'm getting hoarse. I say, I got it. it. I got it. it. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we just thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we magnify you. We thank you, Father God. Oh, we magnify you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, right now, as you're praising Him, somebody in here, there's a work going on in your body right now. Amen. Whatever it is you need healing for, why don't you just praise Him right there. There's a work taking place in your flesh right now. In your bones, in your nerves, in in your muscles. Oh, on the inside out. God's stirring within you. That healing power is at work. You have it already. It's in your makeup. It's who you are. His healing power is within you. It's there. Amen. It's not in the sweet by and by. It's in the here and now. It belongs to you. When you praise Him, you're touching the hem of His garment. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, there's some of you in here, you have your business. There's an account. It may be more than one. I just hear the Holy Ghost saying, there's an account coming your way. There's an account coming your way. The Lord says, there's an account coming your way. And that account, that account, whoo, that, that account is beyond all you can ask or think. But it's by that power that works within. And that power that works within (laughs) is when you got your shout on unto me. Hallelujah. That's when you shout. Oh, you shout because you know I got your back. You shout because you know I got you going forward. You shout because I'm guarding your flank on either side. You shout because you know I have done it already. Oh, and you rejoice before me. And account after account will continue to flow your way in everything and every part of your business because you exalt me, because you praise me first, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Quit looking at the statement and look at the one who holds it all. Amen. Quit looking at the statement. Quit looking at what it says online. And you look unto me. You look unto me and you shout with a voice of triumph and victory. Praise. Your praise takes what belongs to you and makes it a reality for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Ooh, that's good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody is in here, maybe more than one, but there's somebody in here. You've been a, just a warrior. Not a warrior, but a warrior. You worry all the time. You fret all the time. You get so upset, you just have to go away sometimes. You, you worry too much. Worry is not right. God didn't make you to worry. He made you to praise. Because you have nothing to worry about. 
you have nothing to worry about. You're supposed to cast all your care over on Him. See, worry, worry is a sin. And you need to repent of that worry and stop it. You need to speak the word and not your worries. You need to speak the word and not your fretting. You need to speak the word and quit speaking things that aren't yours. Amen. Remember, you ask in prayer, but you praise and you take it. You need to put your praise first, not your worries. Amen. That's for somebody or more than one. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you in here, you got a spouse that ain't walking the line. Hmm. And I, I, what I see in my spirit, I see people who are married and you got a spouse that's not with you or doesn't walk the line with you. But you need to realize you're a light. You're a candle. You're a torch. And maybe you may be tired in the flesh. But see, if you'll praise me, if you'll praise me, if you'll focus on me, says the Lord, you know, I'll lift you up. I'm speaking through you. I'm moving through you. You need to quit complaining. You need to quit griping. And you need to just praise me. And your spirit, my spirit through you, will affect change in your behavior. It will affect change in, in everything that you're doing if you'll just obey me in these things. Amen. Quit being all concerned and worrying about your spouse, your mate. And just praise me. I got them. Just like I got you. You be the light. You be the candle. You be the torch. And I'll draw them unto me through you. Amen. Boy, that's for somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Keep hearing Johnny Cash. Toe the line. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. You need to toe the line in praise. You need to toe the line. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you reel in the big fish, you, you got to work that. You got to let out a little bit of line and just keep reeling in, reeling in. That's praise in action. It may look like something else, but you keep praising. You keep lifting your hands just like you pull back on that fishing rod you need to set that hook by praising God because praise takes amen glory to God thank you Lord hallelujah well amen 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 head bowed eyes closed this morning if you're in here today and you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life or if you're watching online I want to tell you something I always loved hearing Billy Graham. You know, God's got good plans for your life. He has things in order for you that are wonderful. All you got to do is ask Him into your heart. And your world and your life will never be the same again. He loves you. He sent His only Son to die for you. And I don't care where you are. I don't care what you have done. Our God loves you. Our God is faithful to you. And He'll forgive you of all your sin, all your unrighteousness. All you got to do is just tell Him. And if you would, tell Him right now. Just tell Him, Father, I come to you. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, of all of my unrighteousness. I know you have a good plan for me. Father, I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus bled, he died, he was crucified, he died, and he was raised from the dead. And Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart, make me brand new. From this day forward, I will live all of my days for you. I pray this in Jesus' name. You know, if you prayed that prayer today, if you're watching online and you prayed that prayer, all you got to do is just write us a little note. Let us know you did it. If you're here today, come up front. We've got a book we'd love to give you and let you know we love you. We even give you a Bible if you don't have a Bible. We have Bibles in the cabinet. We've got to move all those boxes to get to them, but they're there. Amen.